Welcome back again. So this is kind of part two of the uh, tutorial about names because it's uh, pretty related and if you haven't checked out the tutorial about names you might want to do it first now but this tutorial is really about the spawning part. We have a component spawner and we use it connected with this name example here to spawn for example a cube, a pyramid, a rectangle and so on. So if I slide it and it changed to cube, you can see a cube is being spawned. He is rotating. I'm able to grab it. And you can see if I if I move it away, the, the size of the cube changes. Let's use something different here. It gets bigger if I move it further away and it gets small again if I go back to the spawner. And also if I let go, it snaps back to the spawner unless I really pull it out far enough. So you can see it's always snapping back if I'm close to the spawner. But if I really grab it, move it away from the spawner, now it's a completely independent actor. I can do whatever I want with it and it's not being destroyed. As long as it is here on the spawner itself, if I change it to something different, this actor will be destroyed and another one will be spawned. And all of that logic is inside one little component and this component is handling everything else for you. So it's really a, a small component, but he's doing a lot of stuff under the hood. So let's have a quick look on how the example is being built. You might already remember that we have our component drag and the component drag is giving us different names. So here we have this ball, this small cube, this pyramid. So everything we have here, we have for our name section here. And we are going to talk about this in the component drag itself. But for now, just keep in mind, the names are coming from this drag component. And if we have a look at the slider, we have our component name. Like in the previous tutorial, we have a simple switch on name. In there, we have our different names. And the only thing it is doing is the event spawn new actor from the component spawner. So pretty simple. Everything else, as I said, is completely handled by the component spawner. The component spawner also tries to keep the size appropriate. So if you have a very large mesh, it will scale it down so it fits on this, um, on this platform here. And if you have an array of different meshes, it looks for the largest mesh in this array and sets this to an appropriate scale and all the other meshes will be scaled accordingly. And also you might want to use this component to spawn things because it automatically handles all this multiplayer synchronization things. So you don't need to worry about this at all. So let's add a new, a new example here. Let's add our component spawner and hit compile. And we need something to actually trigger the spawn event. So for this example, I'm going to use the select component. Also, we have a complete tutorial covering the select component. But for the sake of the tutorial, let's just use a simple, yeah, let's, let's use a custom event here. So when the select is being pressed, I want to spawn a new actor. Spawn new actor. And what do we want to spawn? Let's use our, do we have our hand projectile? Yes, awesome. Let's spawn that. But right now, nothing in here is really selectable. So we have a component select, but we don't have anything to, to press on. 
this is only a default scene root here. So I'm going to add a static mesh. And let's just use, okay, let's, you know, let's use a simple cube. So just that we have something to, to press on. And also I want to set the spawner here on top. So I'm not spawning anything here at zero. So I want to spawn it here at the top. Hit compile and save. So every time I select this, it's set to custom. So this will be called and we spawn a new actor from the component spawner. Everything else is completely handled by the component spawner. Let's try it out. So yeah, you can already see it's selectable. And if I click it, a hand is being spawned. These, the hand right now doesn't have a grab component, so I'm not able to grab it. But you can see this is working perfectly. Also, this hand is simulating physics. So that's the reason it's falling down here. But if we use one of our examples, we spawn here. So if we are going to spawn one of them, for example, the, the cube small instead of the hand. So we are spawning a cube on a cube now. And you can see it's rotating. I am able to grab it, I'm able to pull it out here. And Every time I press the cube, a new cube is being spawned. So it's a little small. So for this example, let's go in there, select our component spawner and change the size to something like, let's do maybe 50. Like this. And you can see the cube is being spawned. It's a little too, too low. So I might want to change this. Let's spawn it like here. And you can see now we have a spawner and everything is completely handled by it. And of course you can do it with whatever you want. Let's, let's stop this tutorial by spawning the ends again, because I really like them like this. And also let's, let's modify this a little bit. This really has nothing to do with the components. It's just me playing around because I don't want to cut the tutorial right now. I like playing around. So I'm going to start to set timer by event. Let's create a new event here. Call it spawn hand. Let's call this every 0.5 seconds and make it looping. And I want to spawn a new actor here the hands. So now the first time I press this, every half second a new hands should be spawned. Perfect. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay, just kidding. That's just me playing around. But as you can see, this component spawner is a really powerful tool and it really does a lot for you in the background. So you can just drag and drop it in there, spawn your actors and don't need to worry about anything else. So thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.